my son. I've got three sons. It's only, you know, two. My eldest one is so stubborn. He never sit in a place like this to listen to his mom because in the day I'm his mom. And mom is nag, 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 nag. No, no, no. He cannot see me as a teacher. So he's dragged. Especially, you know, live in England. Someone who said that live in England is just like living in a big pub. <laughs> is it true? Because wherever you go, it's pub. There are more pubs than churches. They even turn churches, all churches, into restaurant and pub. Because there is no money to run churches. All those old churches, some of them are so beautiful, so well built, but no money because there is no young generation going to church because they cannot identify with God anymore. With the way the signs go, they cannot understand, they cannot take in the concept that God built, you know, the earth and Adam and Eve, oh, they can't. So they stop going to church and there is no funding. So all these things have got to close down, turn them into pop, make more money. So how can you win? I tell you. The point is that, I, why I try to tell you this, because if you don't learn this practice, there is no way you can help your children. There is no way you can be a tower of strength for your children to lean upon you because you are strong, you are weak, you are weak. And then the family will be all scattered, separated. And I tell you what, in a family, a mother cannot collapse. No matter what problem, a man can have a breakdown, but if a woman is strong, you can still hold the family, you know, intact. But if a family, if a family, if a woman go collapse, the family will just disintegrate or collapse. Okay? Because a man alone cannot hold the family together. Especially the children. They cannot put the children together. Okay? But a woman can put the children together. And the real strength is not externally. Externally, of course, men is stronger than, than women. But the real strength is come from inside, come from this wisdom, come from your mental self. Whether how well you can deal with Jerry. Okay? So I tell you, you cannot, you women, you cannot collapse. If women collapse, your whole family go. Everyone will go their own separate way. Okay? So you can't collapse. And how you can afford not to collapse? Without this wisdom, without the help from the Buddha, there is no way you can do it. Unless you want to rely on antidepressant, become a zombie, you know, keep on sleeping away not with this thing, this is not the way. Okay? So so can you see that the more that we analyze into it is very frightening. We are living in a very frightening, very, you know, scary, you know, predicament. Because this whole culture, I really feel sorry for the young children young children that we are preparing. We thought that out of a goodwill, you know, we give them education, education. What else can we hope for? But what you say is so right. I don't want my children just to, you know, do well at school. It's important that they got to have moral, moral. Okay? So come back to this. I want to, uh, here. Yeah, come back to your physical self and your mental self, which is taken over by a whole mountain of Jerry, which is the nature of those people who are walking the street. Now, you cannot just suddenly tell them to bring their mental self back home. You have to do it in stages. So the first stage is to practice morality, observing the moral precept. The moral precept, do all the good things, all the bad things, don't do it. That is to take away all this black jelly out. Okay? It means that you've got to have right view. The noble eightfold path begins with the right view. The right view means that you've got to know exactly what the goal of life is, 
The goal of life is to end your suffering. The goal of life is not about making you become more wealthier, to end your stress, worry, anxiety, or end your suffering. Okay? So get rid of all this black jewelry. So I won't preach morality to you because we are grow up. However, I put them in these two books. Two books. Okay? The user guide to life, the moral diet, and the law of karma. The contents of these two books is to do this first stage of getting rid of black jerrys. Now in these two books, I wrote a lot of stories in there, which I planned for all the moms and dads to talk to their children before they stop talking with you, okay? When they are young, when they totally belong to you, you can start the conversation by bringing up all this story in here, telling them, and then gradually give them the moral precept. Because these two books, the content is about building a very strong foundation for your children. Because this world is very, extremely, extremely difficult to live in. Because everything is so upside down. The goal of life is not clear. They don't talk about God anymore. If I know the thought is nonsense, no self nonsense, all these things. Okay? So you've got to work harder, you've got to fight much harder. And most importantly, you must give a good foundation for your children. So by these two books, the content of these two books, read it yourself first. And then use all this content to talk to your children. Try to lay them the foundation, the strong foundation. Let them know what good from bad. Okay? So that when they grow up, they at least they have this strong foundation. They won't be too far away. Too far away. Okay? So these two books are the first part of this course at the first part of this course. So it's about reducing all this black jerry. Take the majority of jerry, black jerry away from you and replace with all the good and wholesome thought, wholesome jerry, okay? But still leave behind some of these black jerry like worry about the bleak future, fear of this and that, you know. So by then, you can come to do the second part of your journey. That is to do meditation of your pasana, bring your mental self back home so that you can end your suffering very quickly. So when you reduce Jerry like this, you can do uh, bring your mental self back to the first and the second home by using your mental eye to know your breathing, know your movement, know your sensation, which will reduce further Jerry. Reduce further Jerry away until your mind is clear from Jerry. Okay? So this is the stillness, the stillness, the calmness. But this is not the end yet. Okay? Not the end yet. You will have to engage in the third foundation of mindfulness, which is so the whole the whole strategy is reduce the population of Jerry by morality, okay, observing moral precept until you've got less Jerry left, uh, less Jerry, and then you clear them, clear them all by bringing your mental self back to the first and the second home. Know your breathing, know your movement, know your sensation until they are totally still. Now once they're totally still, you will engage in the third foundation which is the scientific means to learn the coming and going of Jeremy in the scientific way. That is to know your thoughts, your feelings, your, your mental feelings, which is, this is something that we will do tomorrow or we'll explain more, but give you the whole concept first, okay? Because a lot of people, once they clear Jeremy by noting their breathing, they will experience this very calm, this very calmness, and they will just stay there. And this is what Samadha Pavana is all about. Anyone engaged in the Samadha, 
samatha meditation. Okay. Now, samatha meditation is nothing more than getting rid of jerry. Okay, and then you dwell in this, in this, uh, in this peace and calm without gaining wisdom. Okay, but the enlightenment, you need to know that samadha is something that already exists in India before the enlightenment of the Buddha. The two teachers who taught the Buddha samadha, he can, you know, rise, go up to, you know, focus on the sphere of the emptiness, the this and that, okay, very high up, but all those Technique of Samadha meditation doesn't lead to the ultimate enlightenment. Get rid of your suffering, okay? Because once you come out from meditation and go back home to face your jerry, your jerry will come back again, okay? And sometimes can be worse. This is a very good example for you. This lady, Okay, she confided to me, saying that she had been through a course, a meditation course, supposed to be Vipassana. And in this uh, Vipassana course, take eight days and seven nights. And during that eight days, seven nights, they must take the silent vow. They mustn't talk, they do things slowly, all these things. So, during those um, retreat days, she said that she could do it very well, very calm, very peaceful. But come to the eighth day, she went to the countryside and then the eighth day, the, re the retreat finished, she got to travel back to Bangkok, okay? As she approached Bangkok, she said that, I begin to feel restless, okay? begin to see all this traffic and people, and then Jerry start to come in and make her mind, scratch her mind, become like this. And as soon as, you know, get to the middle of Bangkok, more traffic is more Jerry, more Jerry. And then get to her condo. Her condo in front of the lift, happen to have a few buildings there with all the tools, and then she begin to lose her patience because she just want to get back to the room. So her anger, you know, begin to build up more and more until it become an outburst. As soon as she get into the lift, you know, all the toys get into the way. You know what happened? She said that she stamped on them. She kicked, she stamped on them. Oh my God. Turn into an outburst, okay? And she said by the time she got to her room, you know, she sat down, she cried, she cried, she cried. She said, that, oh, no way that I can do the Buddhist practice. No way, I'm a bad person. Look at me. Eight days, you know, I was at peace. And I had come to Bangkok just only a few hours. And look at me, look at me, what kind of person I am. So she really condemned herself. I said that, don't, don't, don't condemn yourself. This is all come to the technique that you do. Whether your teacher prepare you to practice in the worst environment, like in the middle of the traffic or not, okay? This is what the teacher is supposed to train you. But if the teacher, you see, when you go into the, the retreat that you got to do things very slowly, walk slowly, all these things, hear the silence vow and all these things, is it normal? Is it something that you do in your everyday life? Do you walk like this? Do you keep silence while? No, we don't. We don't. Okay? So when you come back home, do you back to all these usual things? You lose, you don't know what to do. And this is what happened to this lady. So what happened is that the enlightenment of the Buddha, he wants you, us, okay? to study the cause of suffering. The cause of suffering that caused by Jerry. Jerry is the cause of suffering, Sumutai. 